Man, that's great. The late Hazel Atkins. That's a that's a very unique cut, isn't it, Billy? Yeah. It's called They Had Broken Hearts. And it was Hazel on uh, on Oregon. That's right. Probably his only known recording on Oregon, right? The Phantom of Boone County. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. What else do we have in that set? Uh, Love Taker, where he was doing those owl noises and stuff. And at the beginning, <laughs> by Joe's request, Will You Miss Me? We're paying tribute to Hazel Atkins today on a Fool's Paradise. We've got to Billy and Miriam uh, from Norton Records and Joe Coleman uh, also here. And uh, I thought uh, we would play a little uh, interview I, I uh, conducted uh, yesterday. I was able to track down uh, Jesco, Jesco White, Hazel's uh, longtime neighbor and uh, comrade. And uh, Jesco, uh, uh, not surprisingly, had the dancing some... dancing uh, outlaw. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had some uh, exceptional insight to Hazel. The, so, other, the, the thing you should uh, maybe preface it with was... Uh, Hazel in around in the early '60s, around 1962, had a um, uh, a dancing act with Jesco's father, D. Ray, Donnie Ray. He, he w- went by the name D. Ray, and uh, um, Jesco's dad would dance in a skeleton outfit while Hazel played Chicken Walk. Yeah, Jesco and, makes mention of yeah, it. Yeah, and they and they got second prize on a TV show. We've got the photo here with them receiving the prize, but uh, man, I'd love to know what what beat that. <laughs> that is my kind of entertainment. Yeah. Right? You know. <laughs> well, let's uh, catch up with uh, Jessica with a, a brief interview I did with uh, with the man yesterday as we pay tribute to Hazel Atkins on WFMU East Orange WXHD Mount Hope. Right now we've got uh, Jesco White, the dancing outlaw, who was not only a fellow uh, West Virginia performer, but he was also Hazel Atkins' neighbor. And uh, Jesco just wanted to know your thoughts about uh, Hazel as a friend and a neighbor. He was uh, a real nice friend and a real nice person that anyone on this planet could ever meet. He was just uh, a you know, nice-going guy and uh, a cut-up with everybody. That it made him happy to see other people happy. And when he played music, he done the, the best he could to please people and to give them what they wanted to hear. If he didn't know it, he'd make it up for them. And he started out playing in the early 50s. And as a young boy, and my daddy knowed him when he was young, yet real young. When he first started out, he danced for him in the beer joints down in Boone County. And... Uh, from that on, then I met Hassel through my daddy. Then I danced uh, two or three times for him in the beer joints, and we really rock a place, and we'd get together. And he liked me just like he did my daddy, and we never had no uh, kind words against, I mean, no uh, hard uh, words against each other or nothing. He was just good to everybody, and was good to him, and we all stuck together, poor as we was, and just rocked. And to me, he'll always be the king, uh, hillbilly blues player. In my mind, Hassel will be the king of that, no matter who got it started. But the way he played it in a white man's uh, version, is uh, he was the best. And maybe for the benefit of some people who didn't have a chance to see Hassel perform live, could you maybe describe Hassel as a, as a performer and, and, and also what he meant to uh, music traditions there in West Virginia? Oh, he just, everybody in West Virginia... Uh, loved Hassel, but half some of the people didn't like him or like his type of music, but uh, most of the teenagers went wild over it. And uh, most of the older people know Hassel liked him. But uh, other people just didn't like Hassel. I don't know who they are. I, you know, I just don't uh, understand that anybody wouldn't like him because he never did nothing, no ones I know of, but try to survive and make a living in these uh, beer joints playing music. And, you know, to get money to buy groceries and stuff with, to survive. And how was Hazel as a as a neighbor? I know you you lived next to him for quite a while. Uh, he was a type of man liked uh, friends to come over now and then, but not all the time. And he liked his privacy, since he's uh, famous and all. And uh, sometimes he just liked to you know get some rest and not be running the ground. And if he could get that kind of respect, and when you did visit him, he'd make up for it and put you on a show for you. And uh, play music with you and, you know, have a good time with everybody and drink and joke and carry on. You know, just like anybody would have got their private moments together. Uh, He was just a fabulous man and, I mean, a good friend that I lost. It hurt me, and I still can't believe in my mind that it's real. Hassel's really gone. It just seems like a 
joke or a dream to me because, uh, to me, I'm thinking he's somewhere else playing music right now in Chicago or New York. Yeah, it was uh, really sad, the, the, the tragic way that he left us. I know, and uh, he's gone but not forgotten. Any favorite uh, Hazel songs or favorite Hazel memories that you've got from over the years? Uh, yes, sir. I've got a video of Hassel, and I recently got one from uh, Ron Smith, a friend of Hassel's, and also a friend of mine from Richmond, Virginia, that went to his wakes to show our respects. He uh, gave me a copy of Hassel's uh, video in North Carolina. Uh, it's the one I didn't have, so I'll give him a copy of mine for a copy of his, and then it's just where he played music local in different places. And got, you know, me, a little bit of me, uh, too. And after all, I'm a legend, too. But uh, I can't go on performing for myself on account of uh, my health and uh, uh, difficult things, you know, private things. But uh, anyway, like I say, Hassel will live in my heart forever as a friend and a good uh, blues player. Well, Jesco, uh, just want to thank you uh, so much for spending a little time with us and, and sharing your thoughts on uh, on Hassel. Well, I sure appreciate you calling, and uh, everything I've told you is the truth. And like I say, he was a true brother. He rocked to the end. And he just made all, everybody happy, and we'd go to the beer joints and watch him, and uh, you couldn't sit still and you hear a hassle blow. You'd have to get up there and tap dance or boogie-woogie some way. <laughs> 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 I mean, they, they rock and roll, man. They, <laughs> it's like shake, rattle, and roll. If you don't do right, you just save your daggone soul. <laughs> I mean, he made everybody happy and, you know, joy. And that's what I'll miss and cherish my heart of him forever. Well, you know, his, his passing is tragic, of course, but we also have to recognize that he was able to spend a whole life playing music and do, doing pretty much what he, he loved doing. he done that for all of his life, so I know him. Uh, he was 67 or 68 years old when he died. I believe around that uh, time frame, his that age, about... He's two years older than my wife is, and, uh, you know, I just can't believe it. He's gone. But uh, I figure before this whole thing's over, somebody, I'm not saying who or whatever, I'm just guessing at this, might write a song about Hassel, <clears throat> you know, about, you know, the feeling of it and uh, the way he was and the way they really could, you know, remember him with what, you know, little mind they have left, which ain't very much, but... Uh, <laughs> you know, you know somebody. I think I don't know who it is might make a song about him. You see, you had some famous people. You know, like musicians loved Hassel too, as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it's remarkable to think of uh, Hassel's wide-reaching influence all the way there from Boone County. That's right, and uh, it surprised me. I can remember what of everything I've told you, but it's the truth, and that's the way I. All I can remember of him as knowing him as a friend. He was just a wild, wacky, crazy, Boone County, blues playing hillbilly rocker. <laughs> and a wild man. And uh, he was a wild man. They'd always call Hassel the wild man of Boone County. And everybody'd like to get wild. If you went wild, you'd get wild if you was around Hassel. <laughs> 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 He'd put a high test in your tank, man, without touching you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will be his legacy. Yeah, I couldn't sit still and I'd hear him play. I'd have to get up there and dance. And they said I look like a kangaroo or something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they loved it, you know, what we did doing there. They'd sit down and let men hassle have the floor. <laughs> and they couldn't out tap dance. I mean, nobody in the place could tap dance. They could just wiggle and shake their butts. But I danced, you know, in a different way to his music. And he liked it like my daddy did. But I never could out dance my daddy. I've tried and tried, never could out dance him. He was a king of tap dancing. <laughs> and Hassel's a king's of blue playing in a white man's version. Now, we mentioned that you were uh, Hassel's uh, next door neighbor for quite a while. Could you describe uh, Hassel's, uh, Hassel's house? I mean, he also operated a hotel there for a little while. Uh, yeah, he had a Hayes Hotel. It was called, uh, I think, Hassel's Hotel. That was a house he was born in. It was his mom in his house where he lived at first before he got his trailers. And then he had his main trailer after his mommy died out behind a little shane, and he kept his stuff out in that little house. Stuff, you know, he had for years, you know, like records and stuff he made. And he said he'd send them out to people to try to get help to get him uh, started. And 
never did go no whore from her, but he just kept playing and playing. And he's talking himself on a video about uh, Rob been ripped off and stuff, you know, where he'd sent his records out and never got no fur by anybody helping him like that. He just come famous as he was after that then. And do you know anything about uh, uh, a hair hole that he had there? He he often talked about that. A uh, head what? A hair hole, a hole that he put, he, he'd gather some hair? Oh, yeah, to put in. Uh, I don't really know. Hassel had all kind of wild, wacky, crazy things. And when you'd go to visit him, he'd show you these things, explain to you what he was. When I'd go there, he'd just want to drink a beer with you and some coffee and laugh and carry on and show you some stuff for it would be funny to anybody, you know, to see. Like something out of this world that ain't been nobody seen. And I ain't seen nothing yet ain't nobody seen, but uh, he showed some weird, crazy stuff, you know, like a, a man's arm cut off or a leg. You know, but it wasn't real. There's this, like, Halloween stuff, rubber. And the leg would, they'd look real, and he'd have them hanging. That's the way he'd decorate his pad, man. And he made that song, I Want Your Head Tonight. I want to put it on my wall about half past ten. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote a song about these rubber characters, you know, like a Halloween head hanging on the wall, but it looked just like a real person's head cut off. <laughs> and Hassel just dying laughing, you know, when people see that, they'd flip out, man, laughing. Because they'd say, God, that looks like a real person's head, Hassel. He said, I know that reason I like it. He said, that's the reason that song come out good, I want your head night. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, I guess, the reason he wrote them songs, man. He was just a wild character. Now, I must imagine, as a as a fellow resident of uh, Boone County, you must have been really uh, proud to have uh, Hazel there in Boone County. Yeah, he was just a cool person to everybody, and we'd all go out and we'd get a chance to know that he'd be playing in a local beer joint somewhere. We'd go out and see him. He'd rock man to the doors lock, <laughs> make him a couple hundred for gas and cigarettes, He'd be like Willie Nelson, pull out to the next place. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he's just the finest man anybody could meet. He's just wild and cool. Well, Jessica, thanks so much for uh, sharing your thoughts on uh, Hazel. It was really nice of you. Well, uh, I really uh, appreciate you calling because I'd want you to know or somebody to know that was fans of Hazel how I feel about, feel about him, too, because uh, they weren't the only ones fans. I am, too. And just like I said, he'll be missed dearly in my heart forever. He'll never die as long as I'm a living, because Hassel will live in my mind and heart. And I'll remember him from the music and the carrying on that we did together, which was just for fun and to make a dollar, too, to have a good time, to stay, you know, straight. And we never could stay too straight, but it kept us hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's listen to some of that great music from Hassel right now. Jesco, thanks again so much. Okay, you're sure welcome. Yeah! 